Afterwards there sprang from their race two youths, one of whom was called Technites, Artificer, and the other Janos Autochthon, Earth-born Aboriginal. These devised the mixing of straw with the clay of bricks, and drying them in the sun, and moreover invented roofs. From them others were born, one of whom was called Agros, and the other Agroros or Agrotes, and of the latter there is in Phoenicia a much venerated statue, and a shrine drawn by yokes of oxen, and among the people of Byblos he is named preeminently the greatest of the gods. These two devised the addition to houses of courts, and enclosures, and caves. From them came husbandmen and huntsmen. They are also called Aelte and Titans. From these were born Aminos and Magus, who established villages and sheepfolds. From them came Miser and Suduk, that is to say, straight, and just, these discovered the use of salt. From Miser was born Tadus, who invented the first written alphabet. The Egyptians called him Thoith, the Alexandrians Thoth, and the Greeks Hermes. From Suduk came the Dioscuri, or Kaberi, or Karabants, or Samothraces. These, he says, first invented a ship. From them have sprung others, who discovered herbs, and the healing of venomous bites and charms. In their time is born a certain Elion called the Most High, and a female named Baruth, and these dwelt in the neighborhood of Byblos. And from them is born Epigeus or Autochthon, whom they afterwards called Uranus, so that from him they named the element above us Uranus because of the excellence of its beauty. And he has a sister born of the aforesaid parents, who is called Ge, Earth, and from her, he says, because of her beauty, they called the earth by the same name. And their father, the Most High, died in an encounter with wild beasts, and was deified, and his children offered him libations and sacrifices. And Uranus, having succeeded to his father's rule, takes to himself in marriage his sister Gu, and gets by her four sons, Elus who is also Kronos, and Biatilus, and Dagon who is Sitan, and Atlas. Also by other wives Uranus begot a numerous progeny, on which account Go was angry, and from jealousy began to reproach Uranus, so that they even separated from each other. But Uranus, after he had left her, used to come upon her with violence, whenever he chose, and consort with her, and go away again. He used to try also to destroy his children by her, but Go repelled him many times, having gathered her allies. And when Kronos had advanced to manhood, he, with the counsel and help of Hermes Trismegistus, who was his secretary, repels his father Uranus, and avenges his mother. To Kronos are born children, Persephone and Athena. The former died a virgin, but by the advice of Athena and Hermes Kronos made a sickle and a spear of iron. Then Hermes spoke magical words to the allies of Kronos, and inspired them with the desire of fighting against Uranus on behalf of Gu. And thus Kronos engaged in war, and drove Uranus from his government, and succeeded to the kingdom. Also there was taken in the battle the beloved concubine of Uranus, being great with child, whom Kronos gave in marriage to Dagon. And in his house she gave birth to the child begotten of Uranus, which she named Demerus. After this Kronos built a wall around his own dwelling, and founded the first city, Byblos in Phoenicia. Soon after this he became suspicious of his own brother Atlas, and, with the advice of Hermes, threw him into a deep pit and buried him. At about this time the descendants of the Dioscuri put together rafts and ships, and made voyages, and being cast ashore near Mount Cassius, consecrated a temple there. And the allies of Elus, who is Kronos, were surnamed Elom, as these same, who were surnamed after Kronos, would have been called Cronii. And Kronos, having a son Satidus, dispatched him with his own sword, because he regarded him with suspicion and deprived him of life, thus becoming the murderer of his son. In like manner he cut off the head of a daughter of his own, so that all the gods were dismayed at the disposition of Kronos. But as time went on Uranus, being in banishment, secretly sent his maiden daughter Astart with two others, her sisters, Ehi and Dion, to slay Kronos by craft. But Kronos caught them, and though they were his sisters, made them his wedded wives. And when Uranus knew it, he sent Imarmin and Ora with other allies on an expedition against Kronos. And these Kronos won over to his side and kept with him. Further, he says, the god Uranus devised the Baetilia, 
having contrived to put life into stones. And to Kronos there were born of Astarte seven daughters, Titanides or Artemides. And again to the same there were born of Rhea seven sons, of whom the youngest was deified at his birth, and of Dion females, and of Astarte again two males, Desire and Love. And Dagon, after he discovered corn in the plow, was called Zeus or Otrios. And one of the Titanides united to Suduk, who is named the Just, gives birth to Asclepius. In Perea also there were born to Kronos three sons, Kronos of the same name with his father, and Zeus Belus, and Apollo. In their time are born Pontus, and Typhon, and Nereus father of Pontus, and son of Belus. And from Pontus is born Sidon, who from the exceeding sweetness of her voice was the first to invent musical song, and Poseidon. And to Demeris is born Melchithris, who is also called Hercules. Then again Uranus makes war against Pontus, and after revolting attaches himself to Demeris, and Demeris attacks Pontus, but Pontus puts him to flight, and Demeris vows an offering if he should escape. And in the thirty-second year of his power and kingdom Elus, that is Kronos, having waylaid his father Uranus in an inland spot, and got him into his hands, emasculates him near some fountains and rivers. There Uranus was deified, and as he breathed his last, the blood from his wounds dropped into the fountains and into the waters of the rivers, and the spot is pointed out to this day. This, then, is the story of Kronos, and such are the glories of the mode of life, so vaunted among the Greeks, of men in the days of Kronos, whom they also affirm to have been the first and golden race of articulate speaking men, that blessed happiness of the olden time. Again, the historian adds to this, after other matters, but Astarte, the greatest goddess, and Zeus Demeris, and Adidas king of gods, reigned over the country with the consent of Kronos. And Astarte set the head of a bull upon her own head as a mark of royalty. And in traveling round the world she found a star that had fallen from the sky, which she took up and consecrated in the holy island Tyre. And the Phoenicians say that Astarte is Aphrodite. Kronos also, in going round the world, gives the kingdom of Attica to his own daughter Athena. But on the occurrence of a pestilence and mortality Kronos offers his only begotten son as a whole burnt offering to his father Uranus, and circumcises himself, compelling his allies also to do the same. And not long after another of his sons by Rhea, named Muth, having died, he deifies him, and the Phoenicians call him Thanatos and Pluto. And after this Kronos gives the city Byblos to the goddess Baltus, who is also called Dion, and Baritis to Poseidon and to the Kiberi and Agrodi and Heliais, who also consecrated the remains of Pontus at Baritis. But before this the god Tau thus imitated the features of the gods who were his companions, Kronos, and Dagon, and the rest, and gave form to the sacred characters of the letters. He also devised for Kronos as insignia of royalty four eyes in front and behind but two of them quietly closed, and upon his shoulders four wings, two as spread for flying, and two as folded. And the symbol meant that Kronos could see when asleep, and sleep while waking, and similarly in the case of the wings, that he flew while at rest, and was at rest when flying. But to each of the other gods he gave two wings upon the shoulders, meaning that they accompanied Kronos in his flight. And to Kronos himself again he gave two wings upon his head, one representing the all-ruling mind, and one sensation. And when Kronos came into the south country he gave all Egypt to the god Tau thus, that it might be his royal dwelling place. And these things, he says, were recorded first by Sudduk's seven sons, the Kiberi, and their eighth brother Asclepius, as the god Tau thus commanded them. All these stories Thabian, who was the very first hierophant of all the Phoenicians from the beginning, allegorized and mixed up with the physical and cosmical phenomena, and delivered to the prophets who celebrated the orgies and inaugurated the mysteries. And they, proposing to increase their vain pretensions from every source, handed them on to their successors and to their foreign visitors. One of these was Isirius the inventor of the three letters, brother of China the first who had his name changed to Phoenix. Then again afterwards he adds, But the Greeks, surpassing all in genius, appropriated most of the earliest stories, and then variously decked them out with ornaments of tragic phrases, and adorned them in every way, with the purpose of charming by the pleasant fables. 
Hence Hesiod and the celebrated cyclic poets framed theogonies of their own, and battles of the giants, and battles of titans, and castrations. And with these fables, as they traveled about, they conquered and drove out the truth. But our ears having grown up in familiarity with their fictions, and being for long ages preoccupied, guard as a trust the mythology which they received, just as I said at the beginning, and this mythology, being aided by time, has made its hold difficult for us to escape from, so that the truth is thought to be nonsense, and the spurious narrative truth. Let these suffice as quotations from the writings of Sancuniathan, translated by Philo of Byblos, and approved as true by the testimony of Porphyry the philosopher. The same author, in his History of the Jews, further writes thus concerning Kronos. Talbus, whom the Egyptians call Thoith, excelled in wisdom among the Phoenicians, and was the first to rescue the worship of the gods from the ignorance of the vulgar, and arrange it in the order of intelligent experience. Many generations after him a god Sumabellos and Thero, whose name was changed to Yasarthus, brought to light the theology of Taldus which had been hidden and overshadowed by allegories. And soon after he says, It was a custom of the ancients in great crises of danger for the rulers of a city or nation, in order to avert the common ruin, to give up the most beloved of their children for sacrifice as a ransom to the avenging demons, and those who were thus given up were sacrificed with mystic rites. <laughs> Kronos then, whom the Phoenicians call Elus, who was king of the country and subsequently, after his decease, was deified as the star Saturn, had by a nymph of the country named Anobred an only begotten son, whom they on this account called Leded, the only begotten being still so called among the Phoenicians. And when very great dangers from war had beset the country, he arrayed his son in royal apparel, and prepared an altar, and sacrificed him. Again see what the same author, in his translation from Sancuniathan about the Phoenician alphabet, says concerning the reptiles and venomous beasts, which contribute no good service to mankind, but work death and destruction to any in whom they inject their incurable and fatal poison. This also he describes, saying word for word as follows. The nature then of the dragon and of serpents tell us himself regarded as divine, and so again after him did the Phoenicians and Egyptians, for this animal was declared by him to be of all reptiles most full of breath and fiery. In consequence of which it also exerts an unsurpassable swiftness by means of its breath, without feet and hands or any other of the external members by which the other animals make their movements. It also exhibits forms of various shapes, and in its progress makes spiral leaps as swift as it chooses. It is also most long-lived, and its nature is to put off its old skin, and so not only to grow young again, but also to assume a larger growth, and after it has fulfilled its appointed measure of age, it is self-consumed, in like manner as Talvas himself has set down in his sacred books, for which reason this animal has also been adopted in temples and in mystic rites. We have spoken more fully about it in the memoirs entitled Ethophy, in which we prove that it is immortal, and is self-consumed, as is stated before, for this animal does not die by a natural death, but only if struck by a violent blow. The Phoenicians call it, Good Daemon, in like manner the Egyptians also surname it Neph, and they add to it the head of a hawk because of the hawk's activity. Apace also, who is called among them a chief hierophant and sacred scribe, and whose work was translated by Arius of Heracleopolis, speaks in an allegory word for word as follows. The first and most divine being is a serpent with the form of a hawk, extremely graceful, which whenever he opened his eyes filled all with light in his original birthplace. But if he shut his eyes, darkness came on. Apes here intimates that he is also of a fiery substance, by saying, he shone through, for to shine through is peculiar to light. From the Phoenicians, Pharisees also took the first ideas of his theology concerning the god called by him Aphian, and concerning the Aphianidae, of whom we shall speak again. <laughs>